MTuber 3 is a completely revamped and upgraded version of one of our best-selling packs. And now, let's jump into the tutorial so you can see more of what this incredible pack can do for you. Hi, I'm Patrick from MotionVFX.com, and I'm pleased to announce that one of our Final Cut Pro best-selling packs, MTuber 3, is now available for DaVinci Resolve. MTuber 3 is every creator's must-have toolbox to catch viewers' attention and show them exactly what you want them to see. MTuber 3 is packed with titles, effects, and transitions for a total of 72 presets. You can locate the presets inside the Effects tab. The presets are placed in the dedicated MTuber 3 folders in Transitions, Effects, and Titles. To see all the presets at once, in the search field, type MTuber 3 and select Toolbox to display all of the related content. You will get corner screens effects, tools, five animated backgrounds, calls to action animations, chapter bar presets, intros, 3D social media icons, social media lower thirds, many typography presets, and five unique transitions. Talking about transitions, let's add one to the start of our project with Dylan. You can preview the transition or any preset just by skimming the preset with the cursor. If you can't see the preview, check if the hover scrub preview option is activated. Also, you can add any preset to the favorite section by clicking on the star to the right of the preset name. Okay, so I will drag and drop transition number four at the beginning of the first clip. I will mute the audio tracks and preview the transition. I'm on DaVinci Resolve 18, which greatly improved the playback of some effects. But if you don't have real-time playback, don't hesitate to activate the render cache feature to achieve real-time playback. I will zoom in on the transition and directly inside the timeline, you can adjust the duration. But if you want more control over the transition, open the inspector. Inside the inspector, you will be able to set the duration in seconds or in frames. You can also define the alignment of the transition. Below, you will get access to all the parameters of your transition. So you will be able to customize the colors or the size of the elements, like here with the icon. To reset any parameter, you just have to double click on the parameter's name. Okay, next we will introduce Dylan to the audience. So I will add a typography preset. There are various types of animation available, but I will drag and drop preset number 04 over my clip. I will adjust the duration. And inside the inspector, you will be able to enable or disable the in and out animations. In the content controls, you will be able to adjust the global values for the position, the scale, and the rotation. You can also modify the position directly inside the viewer by activating the Fusion Overlay option. Inside the social media icon controls, you will be able to enable or disable the social media icon. But you can also switch the icon to another social media like Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. I will switch back to YouTube and customize the name. Inside the shadow controls, you will be able to add some drop shadow, which could be very useful with a bright background. Next, we will build a nice title animation to introduce MTuber 3. First, I will get one intro. There are seven animated intros available with various styles, and all of them are fully customizable. I'm going to use intro 01, and I will drag it over my two clips here, so it will also transition between the two. For each intro preset, you can also import your own logo, which will be automatically animated. But here, I don't have any logo, so I will switch to the text mode. MTuber 3 is fully optimized for DaVinci Resolve 18. And one way you can tell I'm working in 18 is by the new look of these buttons inside the effect controls. This might look different for you if you're still working in Resolve 17, but don't worry. This change is purely cosmetic and does not affect functionality. So I will edit the text and type MTuber 3. And I will adjust the size and position. Inside the elements controls, you will get access to the color circle parameters, where you can modify the shape and the color of each element individually. I will change the subtitle sentence and type for DaVinci Resolve. I will also set the color to a light gray for the text and the line. Okay, 
So now let's add a 3D animation over the intro. MTuber3 provides real 3D social media icons for almost all social media platforms. And the cool thing is that if you don't find your preferred social media, you can use the custom icon to add your own logo to the 3D icon. So I will drag and drop the YouTube 3D icon over my intro. I will quickly adjust the size and the position to match with my background title. For each 3D icon, you also have the option to switch to a 2D version if you prefer. You can adjust the color of the logo using the color control points. And as it is a real 3D object, you can adjust the X, Y, and Z position of the icon in 3D space. You can even adjust the light controls in the same 3D space. And with that, we are done with our customized 3D title animation. Next, to engage your community, MTuber3 provides 12 typographies with great animations that will add some dynamism. I will use typography 03. I will adjust the position directly inside the viewer using the fusion overlay option. Then I will adjust the size and edit the text. In this preset, the two lines are two different parameters. I don't need the subtitle, so I will simply switch it off. Great, now I would like to ask my audience to click on the like button. So I will use call to action preset number 03. The animation in these presets is a great way to grab viewer attention and encourage them to like your video. Of course, you can customize every parameter like the number and it is a smart preset. So the plus one animation will update the initial number like here where 999 becomes 1000. To switch to the next shot, I will add transition number 03. By default, this transition will move from left to right. But inside the inspector, you can change the motion to move left, up, or down. I'll modify the color and set that to YouTube's bright red. Next, MTuber3 provides social media lower thirds. This is a great way to share to your community that you have more content available on other platforms. I will drag the preset number 01 over my clip. Add the right account name for Dylan. And choose whether I want this to use the 3D or 2D mode. And you can switch to select the right social media. Dylan is also on TikTok, so let's select that option. Next, Dylan is talking about the new 3D icons available in MTuber 3. So I've composited some of the 3D icons available to show them in action, and I've created a compound clip of those elements. That looks nice, but here is a quick tip when you want to optimize your time with compound clips in DaVinci Resolve. In the timeline view options, you can ask DaVinci Resolve to display timeline tabs, and they are very useful with compound clips because now with a right click, I can ask to open the compound clip inside a timeline with the open in timeline option. So a second tab will open and inside I have direct access to the compound clip elements. So I can change the size or position of any of those 3D icons. Then I can click on the previous tab to come back to my project and see the modification. One last tip. If your effect is perfect, but you are unable to achieve real-time playback because of the computer resources required, don't hesitate to use the render in place option to do a quick render of your compound clip. DaVinci Resolve will render a movie file and automatically replace the compound clip. In this example, we can see a little issue where I've lost the transparency, so I will undo it. And in the option for the type of codec, I will select ProRes 4444, as that will preserve the transparency with the alpha channel. If you need to do a correction at any time, you can right click and select decompose to original and you will get back your compound clip. Now, I would like to adjust the position of Dylan on the left and add a nice background animation. So I will select all the video content and I will move everything up one track. Then I will go to the background section and select one background animation. I will use background 03 and drag it below my clip. 
Next, I will use the corner screens preset to simulate a picture in picture effect. I'll use the preset number four. In the inspector, I will move the video on the left and I will offset Dylan inside the rectangle to center him. To polish the animation, I will add a transition preset number five. I will adjust the duration of the background element. There's even more elements and some brand new features like these awesome 3D icons, tons of helpful content creation tools. And I will add more contrast on the background animation by playing with the alpha parameters of the various elements. One of my favorite effects is the split screen as it is the perfect animation to reveal content. I would like to add a sentence over an animated background. So first, I will add a background element, dragging in preset number 02 below my clip. To make room for my typography, I'll move my video on the track above out of the way, and then I'll add preset 11. I will quickly edit the text. Perfect. Now I can get back to the video. I will drag and drop this split screen preset directly on my shot. I've got my final effect, but not the in and out animations. This is an issue due to DaVinci Resolve, but there is an easy fix. I will remove the effect and I will create a compound clip of my shot. I will rename it to foreground. And now I can drag the split screen effect on my compound clip and we will get our in and out animation. Inside the inspector, I will flip the position as I would like to keep Dylan on the left and get the text on the right. Great, now let's fix the background title. First, I will disable the in and out animation of the background element. And then I will select the title and the background animation and create a new compound clip. I'll rename that compound clip background and I will also apply a split screen effect onto that clip. In the inspector, I will set the parameter value to background. It will disappear, but this is normal. Previously, I flipped the foreground, so now I need to flip the background. And now we have a nice split screen animation with both elements center. But we can go further as we can change the split position. So I will select the background element and move the split position on the right. I've got the value 0.297. Now I can select the foreground element and enter the same value on the split position. And that will give me a perfect match for the animation. One more tip. In the animation controls with the custom curve, you can adjust the interpolation by selecting the keyframes and adjusting the tangent. One very useful effect to grab the attention of your audience is the zoom effect. So to use a zoom effect on my clip, I will bring an adjustment clip from the effects panel and drag it over my clip. Blackmagic Design has fixed many issues with adjustment clips in DaVinci Resolve 18. So don't hesitate to use them as they are very flexible. So I just have to drag and drop the zoom preset onto my adjustment clip and you will get a nice smooth effect. As I'm using the adjustment clip, I can decide when I want the effect to begin. In the inspector, you can define the position of the zoom point and the value of the zoom amount. Next, I will add a call to action animation preset 05. This preset shows all the steps to like, subscribe, and activate the bell for notifications. I'll move it on the right and scale it up a little bit. Inside the avatar controls, I will import the profile picture for Dylan's channel and adjust the position of the picture inside the circle. And we are done. The last example I will show you is the chapter bar. This one is unique as it will display all the chapters of your video and simulate the time left as your video duration runs out. There are five various styles for the chapter bars. So to use this preset, I will reduce the tracks and fit all the project in the timeline window. I will use the preset 05 and drag it on the top track, track six. I will adjust the duration from the beginning to the end of my edit. And I will select it and look in the inspector. Inside the text controls, each line is a chapter and you can have up to 20 chapters. So I will name each chapter I need. 
I only need nine chapters, so I will select the chapters below and remove them. Inside the viewer, we can only see the chapters I've edited. Inside the chapter controls, I will be able to choose the right position or timing. For the first one, the introduction, I will set the position to zero to place it at the beginning. To clean up my view a little, I will push all the titles to the end by setting those parameters to one. Next, I will place my playhead in the timeline at the start of chapter two. And I will set the position of chapter two at the limit of the red line. And then I can reproduce that process for all other chapters. Okay, I'm done. Next, I will create a compound clip of the chapter bar effect. And that will allow me to choose where I want to display the effect without losing the synchronization with the timeline. And you can add transitions. So here I will just add some simple fade in and fade out. All right, this tutorial gave you a good overview of the possibilities with MTuber 3. To get more information or details, don't hesitate to look at motionvfx.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials.